Also, WrestlingObserver.com. Hopefully, Mike is here. I'm here. Oh, my God. Thank God. You had the most horrific noise during the break. I had to restart everything. Yes. I didn't have any horrific noise. You did. You're also... How's this mic sound? It's new. Dude, don't get so close to it, buddy. You can back off a little here. Stop that! I just muted you. You got to learn how to use the mic anyway. Don't get so close to it. You're blowing out everybody's ears here. Anyway, Michael, get back here in a moment. He's shuffling around his camera and shouting into the ether. But anyway, we got a lot to get into today. Uh, last night's WWE pay-per-view. Did you watch the show, everybody? And what did you think? Let's talk about it here. You're back, buddy. You right? Am I? Uh, dude, Mike, don't get so close to the mic. It's a new mic. It's, it's What do you want? You complain just, about just I'm back too off, far away from the mic. I'm too back, close to the back mic. A what little, do you want? Where do you want it? Just back a little away from it. You don't have to be as close as the old one, or you're going you're gonna to blow everyone's ears out. Look at your face, dude. Jiminy Christmas. I'm trying to help everybody here. How does this sound right here? That's a little bit better, dude. All right. Thank God we did this before we went on the air here today. Hey, what did you think of the show last night? I'm talking oh, to I you. That, I thought that was being rhetorical right there because there were zombies and such. But, uh, hey, it was a great example of going into a pay-per-view with your expectations kind of down a little bit. At least mine were. I was hoping some of the matches would be good, but I was not all that enthused going into this replay of WrestleMania. But the both the three-way matches were fantastic. I thought the show kicked off great with the women. And then that rolled right into the tag match uh, from SmackDown that I thought was excellent. So... If you take the zombies out of this, if you take that Ms. Damien Priest uh, presentation out of the bit, I thought it was a really, really good, really, really good show. All right, so this is what we had. We'll talk about zombies later because it's a waste of time. Charlotte Rhea Oscar for the women's title. thought this was a very good match. And believe it or not, in this particular match, which I was thankful for, I didn't mention this on any show yesterday, they did not do somebody hits a big move, somebody else steals the pin. Because they were doing that in the other three-way. And so what happened was Charlotte just ended up outside the ring. And then Rhea hit Oscar with her move right in the middle of the ring. Pinned her and retained her title. So I thought this match was very good. We had the Dirty Dogs versus Ray and Dominic for the tag team titles. And thank God I went on the Observer radio thread today and found out that I wasn't out of my mind. This match... Everything about it was perfect, except it went way too long. The story was great. The Dirty Dogs laid out Dominic. Ray had to fight by himself. Finally, Dominic returned. Dominic gets the pin to win the tag titles for himself and his father. Like, the story is exactly what you want. It was very, very good. But it went forever. 17 minutes this match went. It did not need to go 17 minutes. But, I mean, other than that, I thought that the match, like the story of the match, the work of everybody involved, it just went too long. We had the zombie apocalypse. We can talk about that later if you really want to. Bianca Belair and Bailey for the SmackDown Women's title. Bianca beat her using the hair. The finish was botched, but you got the idea. And I don't know if this is going to lead to a hair versus hair match, but I have a feeling that uh, Bailey is going to put her hair on the line against the ponytail. And uh, probably get shaved bald. But that would be my guess. Uh, I think the match was good, but I was uh, like 20% paying attention after the zombie deal. I was just stunned with this show. I was, however, brought back into the show by Drew Lashley and Braun Strowman. Three-way for the Raw title, which was such a great match. I mean, this overachieved in every conceivable way. I shouldn't say that. Drew's always great. Lashley was as good as he normally is. Braun Strowman was way better than usual. And they had a lot of great spots. They took a lot of big bumps. They worked their asses off. I thought that this match was just great. And they did do the finish where Drew hit the Claymore, but Lashley returned, threw Drew out of the ring, and stole the pin, which 90% of the time is just like an easy way out, a lame finish. But for the story they're telling, which is that Drew is trying to win this title back, but first he got beaten with the Hurt Lock in WrestleMania. This time he had the win but was screwed. It worked in the storyline. It is not inherently a bad finish. On this night, it was the right finish. 
but they do it too often. And finally, Roman Reigns and Cesaro in the main event. I mean, they went almost 30 minutes. The in-ring was excellent. And then at the end, Roman choked him out clean in the middle with a guillotine. And then after that, Seth Rollins beat up Cesaro and left him for dead. So if you were worried that there wasn't enough heat on this show, fear not, they gave it to you there at the end. And it looks to me at least like this is the end of Cesaro's main event run because there was nothing in this match that told me we're setting up for a rematch. But it's WWE, and so this might be the beginning of the feud. So that was the uh, that was the show. Right as Mike takes a drink, right when I'm wrapping it up. What did you think of any of these? You want to talk about the zombies, or should I do it? I think people are waiting on you to comment on this in the, in the most Brian way possible. I don't know what people want. I mean, I, the problem is I can't do the most Brian way possible because we're on uh, we're on the radio. Uh, this this match deserves profanity dude it's, i know but it's like it's like the the tapes when we were kids and you know you you go and you get you try to get the two live crew tape but you, you go to caldor or something like that to get it and they don't have that so they have like the radio edited version of everything you got to give them that unfortunately the fcc is is putting this down on us but if people wanted to hear the unleashed you the the full you they can join up to the site and hear you and Vinny and craig talk about it and hear all of the obscenities that you laid out yesterday but You've got to give it to him. All right, here's a today. quick here's a quick PG version, everybody. There were a lot of problems with this match. Uh, first off, <laughs> it's putting it mildly. It's it yeah, there, there were zombies. Why were there zombies? You ask. <laughs> well, there's some stupid movie that Batiste is a part of, and I guess they approached WWE and they wanted them to do a tie-in. Okay, now listen. If it's 1995 WWE and they're losing money, and there's like the potential they might go out of business. And somebody offers them even five hundred thousand dollars, and I don't think there's any way they were given five hundred thousand dollars for this. Oh, fine, you got to do what you need to do to survive. This company grossed just under one billion dollars. They have had the most. Pro- I'm not talking like just gross, but profitability. They have had the most successful year of all time. They don't need any money for this, and the amount of money they got for it, the idea that you actually ruined a portion of your show for the drop in the bucket that you were paid for this is mind-numbing to me. But they did. There's a bunch of zombies. Like, if you just wanted to dress the 24-7 geeks as zombies for your tie-in, whatever. But that's not what they did. These are supposed to be real zombies. Like, The Miz is afraid of the zombies. Damien Priest is trying to keep away from the zombies. Not like you're thrown outside and they throw you back in. They're in the ring and they're like, oh, they're zombies. They're all scared. The announcers have to move because of fear for their safety. That's what they said. Out of fear for our safety, we have to move away from the zombies. When this was over, it was like the worst match of the year. And I saw matches with Bray Wyatt. You know, Alexa's going to be running a rough shot over this women's division. She's probably going to win the tag team titles with a doll. I mean, maybe that will actually be worse than this, but I'm not even sure. The match was bad. It was bad without the zombies. You put the zombies in it, it was even worse. Damian Priest is supposed to be like a rising star, but man, he was in this. This was part of now his canon that he won a match... And then his opponent was eaten, and his opponent's partner, by the way, were eaten by zombies. Which, by the way, the announcers later said they were eaten by zombies. It was a travesty. It it ruined the show for me for like a good half hour, 45 minutes. Thank God for Drew McIntyre and Lashley and Strowman. They managed to get me back into the show. But this was worst of the year material. Easy worst of the year material. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.